Okay, let's continue with the chapter with section three, lipids. Lipids vary greatly in their structure. They are large, non-polar molecules that are not soluble in water. Um, their functions, long-term energy storage, structural components, heat retention, cell communication and regulation, and protection. There's a wide variety of lipids that include fats, oils, phospholipids, steroids, and waxes. And we're gonna discuss all of those in this video. So the main types of lipids are fats, um, which are long-term energy storage and insulation in animals. And in, we, we humans use them as butter or lard. Oils are also used for long-term storage, but in plants and their seeds. And we use these a lot of times for cooking. Phospholipids are part of our cell membranes, and they're really stinking important to our lives because without them, our cells would not have a barrier. We'd just be a puddle of goo. Steroids are components of the plasma membrane and are used in sex hormones, so testosterone, estrogen, those kinds of things. Um, human uses, we use steroids in medicine. Okay, whenever you get really sick with like a sinus infection, you might go to the doctor and they'll give you steroids to help you um, get over that sinus infection. And waxes. Waxes are used for protection, prevention of water loss, so like leaves of plants are generally waxy to keep water from escaping from their leaves. Um, beeswax is wax and earwax. And we humans use wax in candles and in polishes. Triglycerides. These are long-term energy storage molecules. They're also called fats or oils. Um, and they're used in energy storage and insulation. So like blubber of um, Arctic animals. Okay, these are long-term energy storage and they also help keep that animal warm. They consist of one glycerol molecule linked to three fatty acids by a dehydration reaction. Fatty acids can be either saturated or unsaturated. Unsaturated means that they have one or more double bonds between their carbon atoms. And these tend to be liquid at room temperature like plant oils, like for, uh, olive oil. Um, they can have chemical groups on the same side or on opposite sides of their double bonds. So they can have branches coming off. If the branches are on the same side, they're said to be cis, or if they're on opposite sides, they're trans. Saturated fats have no double bonds. That means that every single carbon atom is forming as many bonds as possible between different molecules. No double bonds, no triple bonds. Um, trans fats are uh, triglycerides that have at least one bond in a trans configuration. Um, trans fats are generally considered to be bad for us, so a lot of food companies are taking trans fats out of their foodstuffs. So here we have a saturated fatty acid, or sorry, a um, saturated fatty acid chain. Notice it's a very straight line. So these stack up very well and enable them to form a solid at room temperature. Unsaturated fatty acids, um, they have branches. They, they don't lay straight. They, they don't stack up well. And that's why they are liquid at room temperature. So here we have a glycerol molecule. And we are going to do a dehydration synthesis reaction here, here, and here. We're going to remove three water molecules and form our triglyceride. Tri meaning three, glyceride meaning glycerin or glycerol right here. And these reactions can go back and forth through the addition and subtraction of water molecules. Phospholipids. These are the main components of our cell membranes. They are very similar to triglycerides, but rather than having three fatty acid tails attached, they have a phosphate group attached. Um, the fatty acid tails are nonpolar, meaning they don't have a positive region, and they are hydrophobic, meaning they don't like water. The phosphate head that takes the place of that third fatty acid tail, uh, it is polar, meaning it loves water. And so this gives it a unique structure and allows it to form plasma membranes, which are important in our cell, in our cell. Um, in water, phospholipids aggregate to form what's called a phospholipid bilayer, a double layer, where the heads are on the outside and the tails are on the inside away from water. This 
um, keeps the tails away from water, which they like. Kinks in the tails, those um, unsaturated fatty acid tails, keep the plasma membrane fluid across a large range of temperatures. If they were all saturated, then they would stack together very tightly and the membrane wouldn't move the way that is necessary for life processes. So here we have a diagram. Here we have our glycerol molecule and our phosphate head and our polar, or sorry, nonpolar fatty acid tails. And so when they are put in water, they form this structure right here where the tails point inside and the heads the polar heads are on the outside, so this keeps the tails away from water. Steroids. Four fused carbon rings, um, that's the main structure of the steroid. There's various functional groups that are attached to them, uh, depending on what the function of that steroid is. They are a component of animal cell membranes, and they're used for regulation of what goes in and what goes out, and in the communication between cells. Examples of these include cholesterol, testosterone, and estrogen. Testosterone and estrogen are sex hormones, differing only in the functional group that is attached to the same carbon skeleton. So they're very similar, but that one functional group, that one little bit bonded to it, completely changes its job. Cholesterol is the precursor, it's the starting material for several other steroids. And if you have too much bad cholesterol, this can cause cardiovascular disorders. So here we have cholesterol that can form testosterone or estrogen, all right? And depending on what that functional group is, you can get either a male or female appearing organism. Waxes are long chains of fatty acids connected to carbon chains containing alcohol functional groups. They're, they're solid at room temperature, they're waterproof, they're resistant to degradation, and they are used for protection. So here we have a picture of waxy leaves and waxy fruit and of a bee in honeycomb. And that's it for this video, guys. We'll do proteins and nucleic acids in the next one.